All right, who are we starting with here? Oh, where's my notes? Looks like we're starting with Mr. Max. All right, we are now talking about the benefits and rewards of zero prep gaming. And I know you guys couldn't contain yourself, and you've already talked about some of these. But no, let's let's really focus in, uh, on them now. Mr. Max, what are the most significant benefits you've experienced from zero prep game mastering? For me, like the most significant benefit is that it's just more fun for me you just like like i feel like i'm not i'm not i'm not coming here to oh i'm gonna oh let me come here and tell you a story and entertain you and i'm gonna be like the host and i'm gonna try to distract you for two hour or four hour or whatever <laughs> right no i'm coming here and we all together and playing a game and i'm there and i'm playing a game with you guys and the game is like your character do stuff and i have the world react to that stuff and we try to keep something that is that makes sense that's consistent that is fun and interesting right just like for me, that's the number one benefit. It's just that. It's just fucking more fun. Try it. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the swearing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's happened. It's going to slip out. Like I said, it's not a rule you can't swear. I'm just asking people to, to tone it down. It's still Friday night. You know, We're going to say our things. So how does Zero Prep Game Mastering enhance your ability to adapt and respond to player actions, specifically in your, in your 4D environment? It's like, like I mean, that's something also I mentioned a lot. Like it's something that you get better as you do it, right? Mm -hmm. You like, it's a learned skill, but it's worth it, right? Like instead of like spending the time and like I said, like sometimes like, your session or you're not gonna come with the coolest thing, but you came it on the spot, which is pretty cool, right? So the way that it in in an ends is that you get better at it by doing it. Okay, Victor. What are yes. the most significant benefits you've experienced from zero prep game mastering? Uh, even as a referee, I like being surprised. Surprised, I can talk. And uh, <laughs> like, if I if I'm if I don't have the whole plot pre planned out, I, I get to be su just as surprised as the players when like some random wall comes up mm -hmm. and it's something uh, exciting and crazy. And you know, like. I don't know, it's just that rush that I get that same rush that I do as a player when something unexpected comes up, but I just happen to be the referee and I actually get to be the one that come that on the fly gets to come up with uh, you know the what, what this actually means, this wall or whatever. So just the just the excitement, just the, the randomness. I en I enjoy that both as a player and a, as a referee, basically. It's almost like you guys have read my follow-up questions, which I don't actually send to them. Uh, so what rewards do you find in the spontaneity and creativity of Zero Prep Game Mastering? Isn't that the same question, though? I, well, you kind of answered, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, have, I literally have <laughs> yeah. your name. I can't show the people this, but I literally have your name for this one. I decided on this weeks ago that I was going to ask you this, so you're yeah. getting asked it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so... No, no, it's basic, yeah, it's the, the, the same answer, I think. Yeah, like, but, but uh, what, what's, the, what's the reward in that? I mean, obviously, having fun is its own reward, but what is the reward in in that spontaneity in in that creativity uh, just to watch the adrenaline wash the excitement like uh i'm not just there like doing like some vote like some pre-plans like okay well uh, you meet this guy and blah, some stuff that i've like planned like a month ago and i'm like already bored with because in the meantime i've read like six different books that gave me completely different mindsets and completely different ideas like no i i just i get that i get to have that same interval in would you say that that, that energy having. passes on to the players as well yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah if if you're excited as a referee like the players probably will be excited too because they will sense that so so i write like down notes for follow-up questions based on what they say or i have some prepared ones in case you know there's nothing and this one had victor's name on i'm like well you just answered that but i'm still gonna ask it anyway because <laughs> i put your name on it sir it's it's Max. always fun when the session ends and you're like, oh man, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but that was awesome. And then you're just like discussing it and you're like reminiscing, and I was like, yeah, yep. that was great. It was, it was so unexpected, and yeah, you as a referee just get to join in on that then because it was something that just it's such well, that a goes back experience. to what we talked about before, and yeah. even I was you know we were talking about some of our most memorable game sessions are the ones that even yeah. as somebody who prepped this one, everything I prepped close. <laughs> Yeah. Not happening today because of some of the act. And serious, it's literally started off the first five minutes of the session of wh <laughs> what's happening here. And yeah. I had to tap dance that entire eight hour session off of my, uh, on my feet. I did it. It's one of the ones we talk about the most. But yeah. wow. Yeah. And, and you do. You leave going, holy balls. I'm never going to forget that session. Yeah. It was great. We had a character die. 
<laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> we learned a lot about another character and, you know, yeah. just it's like just so much happened in there and none of it was what was supposed to happen. Loved it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Over to the basic expert. What are the most significant benefits you've experienced from zero prep game mastering? Um, I think I spend less time prepping, obviously. And so I spend less time being disappointed when I think I designed something super cool and then it never gets used because that always invariably happens. Even if you are good at prep and you are able to pare down what you need to prep and what you don't, you always still end up throwing stuff out or it's just stuff just ends up in your notebook, stays in your notebook and it never makes it to the table. Um, so I, I like that aspect too. And uh, I agree with the rest of the guys. It's fun to just discover things. Like I, I'm a forever GM most of the time. I'm forever dungeon master get referee whatever so i don't always get to be a player so to me having something where it's it's low time as far as the prep is involved because it's almost zero and then also i get to be surprised at the table too like a player is when they encounter something you know oh there's a green dragon in front of us this is very surprising like i'm just as surprised as you so you know like that um that to me is just as much fun um as anything else and so that's what keeps me coming kind of coming back for more you know what what's going to happen in the world i don't know like that's it's fun to me no what skills have you developed or improved through zero prep game mastering um i think like what our buddy crossface calls is book control uh mm -hmm. so being able to know where things are in the book that you need where are the random encounter tables? Where are, if, if your book has that, if you need that, where is the, the dungeon generator? Where is this rule for, let, let's say they're asking a question about the economy. They want to like, you know, start a caravan to go from one village to the next. You know, they're, they're interested in the economics of that. Where's that in the book? So you know where to, where to go and reference that so that you're not, you're not spending like 20 minutes. Like, sorry guys. Cause I know, I, I know people have problems with that. You know, you mentioned that like, you don't like that part. I think that can be mitigated by just knowing the rules and having rules mastery. And that's something you can very easily do by having little post-it note book tab, bookmark mm -hmm. tabs, you know, and reading your rule book front to cover, putting tabs in where you think it's going to be important, where you're like, Ooh, this is really, this is totally going to come up in a, in a game session. You know, this, this page needs to be marked and boom, you're right there. You know, so, I prefer a game totally master actually gives rulings over looking up rules as much as possible, but, it is a game, and sometimes they do have to be looked up. My, my issue that I was saying before, and this isn't a deal breaker for me, like I'll just leave the game. It's just one of those frustrating things that happens. I'd say in the vast majority of games, like, oh, we have that encounter with that green dragon you're talking about. Okay, can we take 10 minutes? I've got I've to read what the monster does. I've got to set it up. I've got to get the battle map. I was like, by the time I come back, I'm not going to be in the same, yeah, pardon me for saying this way, this is a story gamer in me, but I'm not going to be in the same like emotional state. I'm not going to have the same verisimilitude, you know? It's like, no, right now we just got this, what, a dragon? And I will use Bruce's story again as as the best. I love this story so much. You guys have heard it before, a lot of you have, where half the party, first of all, the party split, and half of them went through a portal. And I just got a bit, I just lost all my YouTubes. Can you guys uh, hear me? Yep. Yeah. Can hear you. Every YouTube page that I have up. You kind just, of glitched for a minute. Yeah, so. I said not enough memory to open this page. So I cannot read chat at the moment. So uh, bear with me. Anyway, uh, after I tell the story so that I give them time to respond, I'll, uh, I'll just, but half of them went through a portal. They went through the portal. There's a blue dragon on the other side. And the blue dragon, instead of just breathing lightning on them, said, drop your crap. And you can go back out of the portal. Guess what they didn't do? <laughs> and drop and, <their> stuff. <laughs> and there you go. Well, guess we're fighting this out. Well, you know what? You pay the consequences for that. You're only half the party. It's a blue track. You know, like th the encounter could have gone a different way. It was up to the players, you know, in, in how they handled that. And I forgot what my point was for uh, for bringing that up now <laughs> because I, well, I, I, I think I think the the thing though for stopping to look up uh, like let's say oh, the green, there we go yeah the stopping to look up the green dragon is it like for me it's not a big deal because I run AD and D uh, I run um, zero E I run BX and those monster stat blocks are so simple and sure. you, yeah. you know it's it's not like I could see it being harder on a five E stat block where it's like a whole dang page you know. 
But well, see, I'm, I'm I love second edition and the ecologies and so forth. I think those are very very helpful. Are they necessary? No, but I think they're very helpful. So I like to actually dive into those. Yeah, but for, I think for the nature of like, for me, it's it, it sort of like I, I can draw from things that I know about dragons as well. I think that even makes it more interesting for the players because if it's not just like we know what a we know what a troll is for oh example. yeah always change something always change yeah, something no. yep. that, it, it's kind of fun to um to do that and you know crafty's messaging me he's dming me right now uh he's he's telling <laughs> me to to talk about um in the white box game you know they they encountered two green dragons almost had a combat and uh crafty actually laid down they were looking after the patriarch for the church they're trying to find him they found him he's dead he's he was acided by the dragon uh crafty laid down in the mats of uh bodies of the dragon and it like sort of came out with its uh younger this younger dragon and he was just like sweating because he had left the party split the party and he was just like playing dead amongst all the the dead bodies and it started eating some dead bodies and uh almost got him so that was all like zero prep but uh i don't know what i was going I, I gotta do it <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, green dragons don't spit acid; they spit chlorine. Whatever it was, that was the word. Was chlorine. I, I, yeah. I don't care. I don't but care. <laughs> black dragons are the ones that do acid. Yeah. But, um, um, but, but you again, know that... if the setting's different, the setting's different. What if every single right. dragon just breathed fire? Who cares? Yeah. Grows nerd habit. We we're talking about that earlier, right? Gross yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I just had to do because I wanted to beat somebody in chat who did it before me. So yeah um but yeah you know like i i think that the stat blocks in those older editions are a lot more manageable and so it's it's easier to just be like what is a what is a blue what does a green dragon do anyways and sometimes you have enough time to sort of look at something while the players are freaking out anyways and formulating a plan you know like oh no it's a it's a green dragon what do we do we can do this this and this and you know you can just start flipping through figure out what they do real quick if you forget and and move on see that stuff doesn't bother me even as a player if the GM has to look up something because the whole game as, as as a whole is like a waiting game. I, I might be waiting 15 minutes for the wizard to make his turn in combat. I might be wa what? waiting 30 minutes. Uh, well, 5 feet. Uh, <laughs> I, I might be, I might be waiting. <laughs> I, I might be waiting uh, the dwarf wizard too, Max. It's <laughs> uh, I might be waiting like 30 minutes for the bar to seduce the dragon or whatever. So, hey, Sorry, now it's your turn to wait for like two minutes while I look up this rule that uh, I don't have. Oh, no, no. In that time. regard, I, I yeah. won't disagree with you. But yeah. no, at my tables, like I actually tell new players, don't play a wizard. Now, to be fair, if it's really low level, it's like yeah. if we were starting a first level game, it won't be such a big deal because I don't give every spell in the book. You start with like four or eight or something like that where it's manageable. That's why I like slow leveling also. But no, you make a good point when you say that, Victor. Um, don't yeah. But no, I keep you on a time frame. It's like, uh, -uh. Yeah. now I don't have a clock, yeah. but I mean, no, but, but I will be one of those things. Like, like, what are you doing? Someone, Somebody's attacking yeah. you right now. But if somebody's doing like introducing their character and they're taking like half an hour to do it, I'll just sit there patiently and let them introduce their character. But don't then get mad at me if I'm like, oh, hey guys, you're just engaging with this mechanic that I don't have on the top of my head. Give me like three minutes to like read it real quick. It's like, oh, that's breaking my immersion. Well, I was sitting there bored for 30 minutes while you were rambling about your character's history that I don't give a shit about. Like, shut up. It is definitely a two way street. I, yeah. I, I yeah. absolutely agree with with that and i'm not saying never look up a rule i'm just saying my preference is that yeah. the game master makes a ruling when i was in my ad &D, my last ad and second edition game the game master because i know the rules fairly well even after many years away from it i played so much of it he kept making mistakes but yeah. here's how i did it it's like no it's actually a plus four not a plus two he's like well i'm giving a plus four okay move on I, I don't care after that i just wanted to make sure that he was getting it right and he appreciated it it wasn't like i was derailing the game or rules lowering him but it was that that's how quick it was it's like uh no uh, doing this thing actually would be an attribute check not not a uh, uh whatever not a saving throw and be like yeah but i want it to be an attribute check cool it, or it, it oh you're right let's make it a saving throw sorry you know whatever you know it depends on the mechanic for me. If it's like uh, we need to we need to figure out this mechanic that comes up every once in the blue moon and it's gonna take us ten minutes. Okay, just close it over, just make something up. If it's like a core mechanic of like combat, like I've had this happen with a full outer world. Like the GM didn't know how full outer worked in Savage Worlds and he wanted to just gloss it over. I'm like, no, read the rule, because we're gonna be engaging with this a lot. We're playing like a John Woo game where we're like jumping around with dual like MP5s in each, like you know, in each hand. <laughs> 
So I want to know how the full auto rule works so I can engage with this with system properly because I enjoy that. I sure. enjoy engaging with the, with the mechanics properly. So I made him like take five minutes to actually read the rule. And I did that as a player. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, we got one question left to go here, but before we do that, we're just going to start with Mr. Max. We're going to go around the panel, and I'll also read super chats any that I missed. Uh, but to, we'll have the panel remind us who they are, what they create, and where you can find them on the internet. Mr. Max Boivin, let's start with you. So my name is Mr. Max Boivin. You can find me at Recreation Principal Gaming. We talk about uh, we we promote a specific type of role playing. Uh, so we look at the thing a bit different. Than most people. Uh, which we call like the 4D role play, which include the co-creation and a lot of uh, staying in character all the time. So we're trying to minimize, well, most of the time, we're trying to minimize like out of character talk at the table. So if something that you think you might be interested in, go check us out, right? Yeah. Okay. Victor, same thing with you. Uh, yeah, I'm Victor Gochev. I'm from the Netherlands. <laughs> you might have noticed. Uh, um, yeah, you can check out my channel, though I haven't streamed in a while. Uh, just uh, type in my name on uh, YouTube. You'll find it. Uh, I also write games. Uh, I just finished um, uh, my uh, old school essentials, like modern supplement called Modern Necessities. Uh, you can currently buy the PDF on uh, Drive to RPG. Uh, after this weekend, I'm going to set on the print on demand uh, copy. So those will probably be available in a few weeks. So if you'd rather wait for that, then check it out then. But uh, yeah, if you like, you know, D20 modern stuff, but you also like OSR, like old school games, uh, yeah, maybe check that out. Okay. And then we have the basic expert. Yeah, my name is John, the basic expert. I have a YouTube channel. Try and stream once a week on Natural Ones with Vic here um, yeah. on Wednesday afternoons. Didn't this week and the week before just because my kid was home last week. And then she, then she got me sick this week, but usually, uh, usually Wednesday afternoons, usually a video a week is what I try and uh, upload as well. Talking about various game parts. I, I like to dive into the weeds of rules and things like that. And, and in particular, I've uh, been on a zero E kick cause I'm playing a lot of that. So talking a lot about like 1974, uh, zero E dungeons and dragons. So if you like that kind of stuff, you can check that out. I also make games. Uh, my new game is Atomic Punk, the little thing behind me here. Uh, it's like a 2D10 game and uh, kind of like Traveler. If I made Traveler and BX kiss each other, that's that's how I would describe it. Um, and uh, Makuhito is another game that I made. Uh, it's an Aztec 0E game. So you can find all that stuff. Blood sacrifices. Yeah, you, you gain XP by sacrificing people. So yeah. <laughs> hearts for XP. Yeah, hearts for XP is the colloqu the 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 term we've come up with. So yeah. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. And you guys should, everybody should check out their channels. Uh, so the only chat that I started was this one. Is this discussion uh, show over prep, Max? Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. No, I, it's intentional because, you know, we used to have shows. If I don't over prep, we either have the old Friday chill stream, which some people like, uh, or I get people on that say, uh, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. like, no, what we're supposed to be answering to the best of their abilities is what you did, how you did it, what the result was, or what you do, why you do it, uh, what you do, how you do it, and why you do it that way. And I think these guys have been doing, they've been doing that. I mean, it doesn't have to be answered specifically in that format. That's just a general premise. So, yeah, uh, I even send them the primary. They don't get the follow-ups because I don't always know what the follow-ups are, but they get the primary questions beforehand. And that's what allows us to have a, a show where people don't just sit here going, uh, hold on. Um and better interaction with you guys. So yes, I over prep. I put that on the screen. Uh, if you're interviewing the CEO of Nike, just do it. Is a perfectly acceptable answer. Uh. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, let's get to the last question here, and we are on Victor. Sir, we're starting with you. What yeah. advice would you give to aspiring game masters interested in trying? I'm afraid of zero prep. You guys make it sound so complicated. No, they didn't. What advice would you give? to uh, an aspiring game master interested in trying zero prep game mastering <laughs> well after your previous statement just now uh, this is going to sound very uh, <laughs> very controversial but just do it <laughs> like, <laughs> like just do it just, just try it and have fun and see what happens and if you fail the, the first time if you fail the first time 
yeah, whatever. Try again. Like, just just go into it with your players, knowing that you want to try <laughs> this. Uh, uh, you know, maybe ask them to give you some slack and actually go along with what you're trying to do. That's what I do if I'm trying something new. It's like, hey guys, I'm trying something new. I'm not used to this. Don't try to like, you know, throw me for a loop. Like, go along with it for maybe. And uh, yeah, so, like I think that actually in this in this instance is a perfectly viable answer. Just do it. Just just try it. Have fun. And. Uh, Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, and uh, that's fine because, like we said earlier, it's not a one-true wayism. If you enjoy prep, if you want to write like a, 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 this, this thick of a notebook that's like three times thicker than the actual game you're running, go right ahead. Nothing stopping you. What feedback have you received from players about your zero prep sessions? Um, that they just really enjoy them. That uh, okay. they they love those they they love those random moments. Uh, um, I think I kind of proved myself because uh, I took over uh, GMing from a very prep-heavy uh, GM that had everything planned out. He had like this whole wor world. He would give us like sometimes like literally like an hour-long lore drop on just like a, a city. It's like, well, what's the city where we're going to? And he would just give us like the politics and all the players and all that stuff, uh, all the power players. And uh, I took over as a GM from that, and I just ran like a classic, just like exploration dungeon crawl type game. And then people privately told me, like, hey, Vic, we liked your game way better. So, <laughs> yeah. There you like, go. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically that. Okay, moving over to the basic expert. What advice would you give to aspiring game masters interested in trying zero prep game mastering? Uh, pick a game that is going to um, be conducive to doing it. I always recommend people picking up Scarlet Heroes, uh, this game here, for the specific reason that uh, it's by Kevin Crawford. You can get this on Drive Through RPG. Uh, for the specific reason that it's a game that you can either solo game yourself, or it's a game for like one to two very like high powered characters in a BX sort of style game. Yeah. Um, so you're you're like it's the same sort of BX rules you know and love, but you the player character is a little more um, viable at level one than and beyond than a normal BX character. So that means that, but but it has wonderful tables in that game. And it has so you could run a game for like one for you, just like you and your buddy, and you yeah. could practice it. Um, that's yeah. how the streams were with Vic, and I, I had like one or two other players in it. And it's a good way of just just getting used to it. You can run a couple one shots with a buddy that way, or a solo game in it. Um, I'd also recommend uh, picking up a game like AD and D First Edition or Classic Traveler or something like that, and reading those, seeing how those games work. And you try running those or solo gaming in those as well, or running them for like a one shot with friends with no plan after you've read the rules. And like they said, just try it. Uh, but again, know where the tools are in those. But um, I would just suggest picking a game like that that is conducive to it. And I think probably the best way to start is is again probably Scarlet Heroes, especially if you're like not used to old school games, you're not used to the high Gygaxian. Uh, Scarlet Heroes is a good game to get and. Uh, Get, get your feet wet in it and it has everything you need inside of it including a setting um that you can use to to practice your zero prep but that's also okay. easily ignored yeah you don't have to use a setting but you, it does have a setting in it so so i'm not going to ask you a follow-up because i was demanded that i mention this uh, so a basic actor being humble tim cask one of the tsr originals said john's game is the best designed game he's read in the last 30 years but there's a caveat to this Tim Cask has some pretty bad takes on things, so <laughs> I don't know what that means. He was talking about Makuhito, so uh, that, oh, is he talking about Ma Makuhito? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, no, that's that's great. Honestly, getting any sort of, sort of shout out from that, I just don't think that Tim Cask and I could be at the same gaming table. <laughs> uh, we have differences uh, of opinions. My game was great. So, well, uh, Jim Jim Wampler liked Makuhito too, so uh, he seems like well, nice I, I, honestly, let's you know. I don't know of another game like that. To me, it doesn't meet anything that I would ever run or do, but I absolutely see uh, the ingenuity of it, and I see why people would want to. I just have no desire to run an Aztec-style campaign. If you could I take them, you, you could take them and use them as bad guys in your campaign, though, if you want. Well, I'm doing sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I get it. it's the same thing like with cow punchers. Yeah, I, I don't even like westerns, so I'm not going to get cow punchers. So it's not, it's just not something I use. On the other hand, Atomic Punk, I will be buying. Will W I L L. And I uh, haven't yet, but uh, like I said, I was holding off because I did uh, just found out recently that second edition, or are you calling it second edition or 
it's it's um I revised. guess it's what it is. It's it's like revised. It has okay. a lot of extra stuff in it, but yeah. third edition technically at this point. Yeah. So it's but it's just about the style of game. I, but I want to say for folks out there though, yeah, if you want an interesting Aztec, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was it called in D and D? Mastica. Uh, <laughs> I was going to call it supplement. I cannot word right now. Uh, if you want something that's different than just your normal fare, uh, I highly suggest. I was absolutely. I, lo- I love the way it was. You had the three color art or the three color layout. Uh, the the whole mm-hmm. idea of the sacrifices mm-hmm. and so forth. I really thought was not overdone in a cartoonish way, but really led to the feel of the setting. I, I liked it. Well, well the beauty. I like it. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say the beauty for me is that it's white box, it's OSR, so it you can easily take just the monsters, just the magic, and just like implant it into a different game that has like a similar system or just uses white box in general. That's like what my whole campaign that I'm currently I literally wrote a whole white box game just for this campaign idea. So you know, yeah, we're about not talking Pep. about you anymore. No, we're talking about Pep. <laughs> but like, I literally did that just to use Makuhito, just because I want to run a modern game, but with like Aztec monsters and magic and stuff in it. So that's cool. Yeah. What I find interesting is all the just the idea of like this art for XP, right? The the sacrifice, like sacrifice to get the XP. That's changed the dynamic of the game so much because it forced you to approach combat and enemies and the different like kind yeah, of. Yeah. Like, now you want to keep them alive at least for a minute. <laughs> exactly, and yeah. you want to drag them around and right. It's like. Just this one rule change there changed the dynamic of the game completely. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Max Boivin, what advice would you give to aspiring game masters interested in trying zero prep game mastering? Don't put so much pressure on yourself. You know, you're not there to try to impress the player by how clever you are and like how great of a story you can come up with. If you want to do that, just fucking write a novel and then like force your friend to read it, right? Just like. You're there to play a game. Take the pressure out of yourself. Just try to have fun and tell your player that's what you're doing as well, right? You're just there to play a game. If you don't like it, you fucking run the game, right? Just saying. But let's just try that. And if you want to try no prep and you're not sure about it, do some one shot, short campaign, like a few session, right? That's fine too. That works well. You can like you can work your muscle with that. And I, I think well. One more time, <laughs> how does Zero Prep Game Mastering contribute to the sense of collaboration and shared emergent storytelling? Yes, it contributes a lot, and it because it really the, the players feel like they have the freedom, right? They have the freedom to go away with that. Because even if you, when you, if your player, even if they, you don't put them on a railroad per se, right? If the player know that you put a lot of prep, they kind of feel obligated to bite on the hook that you present them right and go along with the ride right you don't force them but you know it's good at the kit so they're gonna you know so they put themselves on the railroad anyway right just like if you go if you say like well you know what i'm doing in the snow prep game so you lead the charge i'm gonna try to react to what you say they feel like they have this uh freedom that they can actually do what they want to do with their character <laughs> All right, any final benefits or advice you got for folks before we wrap this up? Uh, if you don't zero prep, you're stuck because it's the one true way. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just blew all, like 99% yeah. of all the videos <laughs> the one part that's clipped. And <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, before we get into the super chats and comments, I just want to remind folks that this Sunday on RPG Digest, uh, Heathen Dog is covering The Rifter at nine and a half, apparently too much for the first book, so they made a half another book. Uh, absolute, po- I will be starting Absolute Power. This is not the book. This is just something, uh, deck cards, but Absolute Power from Descami. I'm going to be starting that series, so we'll go through that. So if you like Bessem or if you want to try a different superhero that's more like Champions, but maybe... Is that, a, I don't know. is that like kind of the spiritual successor to Silver Age Sentinels? Yeah, well, that's well, he actually yeah. calls it Silver Age Hero Second oh, okay. Edition. So, yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's called Absolute Power, and I don't know anything about Silver Age Sentinels. So, yeah, uh, but we'll be covering Absolute Power and the Rifter number nine next Friday, 18th of October, on some random RPG live stream. We're going to be talking about how to run a Halloween horror one shot, and I got a lot of poo poo. Oh, nobody cares about that. Oh, nobody get, wants to talk about that. Well, I've got three people on here, and guess who they are. Well, one is Hunter. He's going to be new. I've never talked to him before, so we'll see how that works out. The second one is going to be Lord Mattias, who's been on the show before. 
And the third one is going to be Kevin Simbita from Palladium Books talking sure about horror, horror one shots because apparently he's run a bunch of those. So uh, that's going to be fun as heck. And now uh, Kevin's on a very, you know, unfortunately, he's on a pretty big time crunch, but he wanted to be here. And I want to stress that I didn't beg him. He wanted to be here. That's about you guys. So uh, we're going to we're going to try to respect his time and get through as much as we can while still giving good information. I do have somebody on tap for when if Kevin has to leave before the show ends. But uh, that's awesome that Kevin is now going to pop on a Friday show. That's great, especially considering how busy he is right now. So uh, one shot is like you have to zero prep a Palladium game and you have to have book control. I mean, oh, sorry. Uh, book control. You can't. You no. You have to zero prep Palladium because there is no such thing as book control. Uh, but let me put this up right here. A very, very sincere, sincere thank you to Victor, Mister Max Boivant, and John, the basic expert. We got a ton of great comments on the background saying how great this panel was. Uh, and I agree. I think it was, I hope you guys learned a lot, even if it was a little bit repetitive, but sometimes, you know, repetitive and this is necessary in order to get the point across. So if you enjoy this discussion, please like this video, subscribe to Legion myth and to all of the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful week.